This device right here changed everything about how I viewed hi-fi. This is the Denifreps Ares 12th. This product right here, well, it wasn't this one specifically, it's older brother, changed everything, my entire paradigm about hi-fi. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Denifreps Ares 12? This thing is a chunk of metal and quite beautiful. Talk about a piece of hi-fi right here. When you pick this up, you know you're dealing with something good. The coolest thing about Denifreps was when I did the first Denifreps Ares review, it was kind of revelatory because I had heard decent sources before. I had listened to a ton of DAX prior to that, but the Denifreps had something special, and that was dementiality. That was organic placement of instruments and performers in space. And I had never experienced that before. It was so impactful on me that I actually said, the Denifreps, not this one, the previous one, was the most important piece of hi-fi that I had ever listened to because it changed everything. Klipsch RP500 suddenly became less intense in the upper mid-range. ELAC debut reference, now we're deeper. I could hear micro details on top and it blew me away. And that was the day that I figured out how important sources are in your system. Even more important than speakers. I want to go to Target. I got to shave first. Dad, I want to go to Target now. I have to shave. But wait. I need a new Harry's razor, and I don't have time to order it online. Let's go to Target. Yeah! Back in that, back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Back in that, yeah. Tell them to watch it. Nah, I ain't talking my pockets. Just know we ain't running out the way that we stock it. If I got it, you got it. If I call it, she slide and tell her to mop it. Yeah, I got that shit on. Damn, she took that thing off and bring it around. Going at it till I'm on. Put that nani in a hole. I'm beating it down. I'm back. Check out this chrome one. This one's super cool. You got a charcoal one too. And sage. And a craft handle. Ember. So make sure when you're at your favorite retailer, like Target or Walmart, to check out Harry's because they have a whole bunch of it. And they have everything you need, like your shave gel. Target, Walmart, Costco. Harry's has you covered wherever you're going. And make sure the next time you're shopping in store, you check out Harry's. Put it in the comments. Tell me what you got and where. If you're anything like me, you're gonna be at these stores anyway, shopping for food, cereal, and things like that. It's super convenient just to get your Harry's while you're at the store. If you're anything like me, if you're anything like me, you run out of shave gel quickly and you don't always have time to order it online. Well, you don't need to worry about that. Run on over to Target, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, your favorite pharmacy, get some Harry's. Thank you so much, Harry's, for sponsoring today's video. So, the Denifreps Ares 12th-1 comes in at $998. Now, if you go to their website and you click buy now, it defaults to Singapore dollars. In Singapore dollars, it's $1,349. Change it to USD. Last time I did a Denifreps Ares video, everybody got in the comments said, no, it's more expensive than $750. Back then it was $750. 9.9882. I guess depending upon what the exchange rate is 
right now or when you're watching this video. On the back, you have an I squared S input. I2S, I don't know how to say it. I never use it, so it doesn't really matter to me. You also have one optical input, which I wish there was two. Digital coaxial input, USB inputs. And it's the full size USB, like the printer cable style, not USB-C, full size. I don't know if that's good or if it's bad for you. Doesn't really matter to me because well, I don't really use USB very much. But if you do use USB, it comes with the latest firmware. From my understanding, Denifreps has always been pretty good if you need a firmware update. And there was some sputtering and spitting that would go on with USB inputs sometimes on the other Aries. So it's got the new firmware. Has XLR balanced outputs, RCA single-ended outputs, and that's how I have it connected to the A10 Classic from Advanced Paris. It was a beautiful amp on the planet. I am so in love with that amp. I've got it running on the ELAC Unify 2.0 speakers right now with, of course, a Weem streamer going into it. Build quality. Oh my goodness. This thing is so beautiful. The one, the one I got is the aluminum version, I guess. Maybe they're all aluminum. Maybe one's black and one's silver. Anyway, I have the silver one and it's brushed aluminum and it's gorgeous. Feels like a brick, has a linear power supply on the inside and apparently it's upgraded. <laughs> What is this and why do you need it? This is a digital to analog converter, which means it takes digital music and makes it into analog music so you can plug it into your system. If you're looking at this product, you probably already know what a DAC is. However, if you don't know what a DAC is, it makes your music sound better. Either from your computer, a streamer, from your CD player, from your gaming console, whatever it is, this is gonna make it sound better. Now, this specific DAC is a little bit different than most DACs because it is an R2R architecture. I don't know if that's how you call it. Anyway, instead of having a chip, a Delta Sigma chip, this has a bunch of resistors and capacitors. This is the way digital to analog used to happen back in the day, which was a Wednesday, funny enough. Is it funny enough or funnily enough? Funnily sounds funny. The takeaway on an R2R DAC is, well, it's never gonna be obsolete. Cause it's old school, like bullying and dial tones. No volume control on this. So it has a fixed output, which means you will need to control volume either on your amplifier, your integrated amplifier itself, or your preamp, which this would be going into. This thing has crazy specs. Signal to noise ratio, 115 dB. Dynamic range greater than 119 dB. Stereo crosstalk negative 124 dB. And a THD plus N 0.004%. That's real, real quiet. If you wanna know all the specs about all the inputs, it does DSD, it does PCM to the whatever levels you need it. 24, 192 is pretty much what anybody needs. Does not do MQA. So if you're a huge fan of MQA, well, this DAC's not gonna do it for you. It's got a femto. I don't know why, but pimento cheese just jumped in my head. I love pimento cheese. I literally just dip it with giant Fritos, the big Fritos. I just eat pimento cheese. And sometimes I will take crab salad because the crab salad and the pimento cheese are usually very close in the supermarket. This is gross. So I'll take a scoop or a forkful of crab salad and then a forkful of pimento cheese and then eat it like that. I know. I'm not proud of myself, but don't knock it till you try it. Contempt prior to investigation. Mix your pimento cheese and your crab salad together at the same time. Fem <laughs> anyway, as a femto crystal which is the clock. And a lot of people that are digital file heads are very concerned about clocking issues. Is that a good one? I don't know. This also comes with a three year warranty. And I know that doesn't always mean anything, especially when a piece of equipment's coming from overseas. A lot of times, 
They can say it has a 35 year warranty, but you just have to send it back to China. They'll evaluate it and then they'll tell you nothing is wrong with it. And then you need to pay to have it shipped back. Well, Denifreps is not that way. They actually have a service center in Texas. One of my patrons had a USB issue with his first generation Denifreps. Sent it over to Texas, they fixed it and sent it back. So the takeaway is there is US support for this product. Also, I don't have an affiliate relationship with Denifreps. I get nothing. And if they want it back, I'll send it back. So I've got no horse in this race. So I'm not incentivized to give this a super awesome review. You can choose to believe that or not. Make your bed every day, even if you're in a hotel. It starts the day off right. The DAC that I compared the Denifreps to was the J2 from Gishelli Labs. With the J2, I actually had it hooked up to a linear power supply and I had the Sparkos op amp upgrades installed. So the J2, kind of similar to the Denifreps because now it has a linear power supply. Does that make a huge difference? Kind of. The J2 already sounds awesome with just the stock switching power supply. I wanted the best of the best out of the J2 when I compared it to the Denifreps Ares 12.1. And even with all the upgrades, even with buying an external power supply, an external linear power supply, the J2 is coming in less than what the Denifreps is coming in at. You may have guessed I'm not at home. I'm actually at the Florida Audio Expo. So make sure you're subscribed and like this video so that tomorrow when I release a video or maybe the next day when I release a video about the Florida Audio Expo, you can check it out with me. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff. So make sure you like this video and subscribe. Thank you. The other difference between the Denifreps Aries 12-1 and the J2 was there's a bit of a level disparity. So this is one of those times where it makes it very difficult to compare two pieces of equipment. So what did I do? Nothing. To me, I think I could still hear some sonic differences between the Denifreps and the J2, even though there's a little bit of a level difference. The J2 has three different settings of gain. Denifreps only, well, has one. With the J2, you can set it to basically low, medium, and high. Levels out of the Denifreps kind of came between medium and high on the J2. I compensated a little bit with volume, but the differences in sound were big enough that having even with that level disparity, I still heard a difference. Scentless Apprentice by Nirvana. That is off the In Utero album, and it's an intense song. You should really check it out. The same screams on the J2 just seemed a little bit less intense than on the Denifreps. Put some jazz on Miles Davis, So What? And the piano on So What? Just seemed, it was coming out of the left speaker, just seemed more in the room and a little bit more realistic on the Denifreps than it did on the J2. Now, Throw Me Away by Korn off the MTV Unplugged record. And if anybody doesn't think this is an audiophile song or you can use this song to test out equipment, please stop everything you're doing, run and go listen to that song because it is incredible. There's Japanese taiko drums, Jonathan Davis's voice at the beginning. You can tell a lot about a piece of equipment before the music ever even starts on that song, just by him talking. It's such a nuanced song. So if you haven't heard it, please go listen to it. And then tell me what you think in the comments about Corn, Throw Me Away off the MTV Unplugged record. Wonderful record. If you're just dipping your toe into the corn pool, that's where you should start. Again, with the voices, I felt like the Denifreps was just a touch more forward but you could also hear a little bit more detail in Jonathan Davis's voice. It wasn't, it wasn't, didn't have as much baritone than the J2 had, but depending upon what you're after with your music, there was a little bit more air in his voice on the Denifreps versus the J2. Tygo drums, the J2 had it all over the Denifreps when it came to smack. 
and fullness. But initial attack, so when the stick actually hit the drum head, more clarity on the denifreps. They were both great with Soundstage. And that's one of the things about a DAC is there's a ton of DACs that sound really good. There's a ton of DACs that sound great, but there's not a ton of DACs that can do Soundstage largeness and depth well. And the J2 and the Denifreps Aries 12th, I get really, really weirded out saying that. I'm just gonna say the Denifreps. They both have Soundstage and Imaging locked down. Both really, really good. Both great products. Both awesome products. I think if you're more into acoustically focused music, if you're more into singer-songwriter stuff, you may want to look at the Denifreps over the J2. The J2 is going to do great on everything, but the J2, again, I think is just fuller on the bottom and punches way harder than the Aries. Aries has more detail through the mid-range, maybe on the top end a little bit, but the mid-range didn't always seem like super organic on the Denifreps. It was super detailed, but it didn't have kind of as much warmth as I wanted it to. These are both great products. The J2 is gonna come in around $700. If you add a linear power supply, it's gonna come in around $900. So there's about $100 difference in the price. Both of them have fixed outputs. If you're in the market for a DAC and you really wanna level up your system and you have about $1,000 to spend, I would look hard at the Denifreps. I would look hard at the J2 with the Sparkos op amps upgrades, maybe a linear power supply, and you're gonna be all set. What would I choose if I was picking a DAC? J2. But you also have to understand, my music like is rock and roll, is metal, is grunge. So I like that really dynamic, hard hitting bottom ends. And if you really want the utmost detail, I think maybe the Denifreps is for you. But as for me, I like my J2. The funny thing is the only reason I got rid of the Aries first generation is because I got a J2 and it wasn't even the J2 4499. It was the J2 4493. I just wasn't listening to the Denifreps as much and I wanted to give it to somebody that would really appreciate it and listen to it more. The Denifreps is a beautiful piece of kit though. Beautiful piece of kit. And I think most people are gonna like the looks of the Denifreps more than they're gonna like the looks of the J2. Doesn't make any of us wrong, right? <laughs> Just about what we like. So if you wanna support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. We have patron-only content. We have patron Zoom calls. We have a patron-only Discord, patron-only Facebook group. You can use the thanks button down at the bottom of this video. Send me a couple of bucks, a tip, buy me a cup of coffee. Help me fund hotel rooms when I'm covering audio shows. You can use the links in the description. However, the Denifreps link, not affiliated. What else? You can buy some merch. Buy a coffee mug if you want. So don't binge watch Netflix or Hulu. Binge, listen, and fill your soul with happiness and positivity and spread it throughout the world. That I'm Randy, the cheap audio man.